Hi everyone, so this is something I've mentioned in uh, a number of videos in passing, uh, but it also seems to be something that I need to keep mentioning, uh, because in the comments to my videos this keeps coming, coming up. So whether I'm talking about um, damage to a sword, and you know we talk about edge parrying and parrying with a flat and all of these sort of things, uh, and keeping an edge sharp and those sort of things, the background context that you have to bear in mind the whole time is that a sword for the majority of history, and in the majority of scenarios in history, is a sidearm. That is, it's something you wear at your side, like a pistol. Okay? So if we use the pistol analogy, uh, pistols are carried uh, by certain types of um, soldier today, um, out in, uh, you know, in various uh, uh, conflict zones, but they're not a main weapon, they're not a main battle weapon, the main battle weapon is the assault rifle. Well equally, whether you're talking about the medieval period where the main weapon for a knight for example, a knight's main weapon would be a lance on horseback of course, and then on foot it might be a spear or a poleaxe, um, and very very occasionally a, a, perhaps a two-handed sword. Um, and then if you go maybe to the, to the 16th century um, where um, uh, common soldiers' uh, main weapon might be a pike or a halberd or, or a gun, um, and, but they would have a sidearm as a sword. Um, and then if, even if you go through to the, uh, say, the Napoleonic period, where obviously um, you know, a, a, an infantry officer even, uh, his main weapon might be his sword, but does he get to do a lot of fighting? Not really, no. His men do most of the fighting with their bayonets. Um, so the first point I want to make is that the, the sword is generally in most type for most types of soldier is a sidearm. Okay? So coming from that, swords didn't actually get used an awful lot in most warfare situations. Okay? Um, and uh, so a sword might be taken to war, might be taken to a battle, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it comes out of the scabbard and gets used. But then even if it does get used, um, even if the sword comes out of the scabbard and gets used in an encounter, maybe kills one person, how many blade contacts might be involved in that encounter? Well, potentially very few. It might be ding, ding, bush, and hit him, and he's dead. Um, or it might be defend, defend, and then one of your friends kills him. Uh, or it might be defend, defend, run away. Um, so. The sword itself, even if it gets used actually in, uh, in fighting, might not necessarily actually have many contacts with an enemy weapon um, before that conflict is uh, concluded in one way or another. Either you're dead or, or the opponent's dead. Um, and, um, and you know, the situations where swords get used, even if you're talking about, uh, for example, light cavalry in the Napoleonic period, so they would have a single shot pistol or a single shot carbine and once they'd emptied that they'd draw their sabres and they'd go in and they'd do something with their sabres. But usually you're hitting people, you're not hitting their weapons. If they defend, you might hit at them, they'll defend, that's one blade contact and your horse carries on, that's it. So there was one blade contact in that encounter, even when you've used the sword. Um, and you know, civilian situations where um, where duels or, or self-defense situations happen, um, equally uh, might have a very small numbers of actual uh, blade contacts or weapon contacts in the encounter. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is that the sword very often in war wouldn't encounter another sword. So if we look at a very simple example, if we take the Napoleonic period example again, if you're an officer on foot, um, an infantry officer, or say an artillery officer, and you have a sword, the majority of the men fighting around you are not also going to have swords. The majority of them are going to have muskets with bayonets. Um, so most of the time when you're parrying an attack that's, that's um, directed at you, or whether you're uh, attacking someone else, um, those weapon um, contacts, those weapon encounters, are usually not going to be between a sword and a sword. They're usually going to be between a sword and something else. Um, and the majority of the time, of course, they'll be between bayonet versus bayonet, or pike versus pike, or halberd versus halberd. Uh, and occasionally it might be sword versus halberd, or sword versus spear, or whatever. Um, so there we go. It, 
always comes back to context and when you're um, worrying yourselves about your sword maybe getting damaged, bear in mind all the other things I've said about, you know, the sword is actually no, nowhere near as important as your life uh, and winning the, winning the fight or winning the battle. The sword is just a tool. But also, as a tool itself, not only will it probably not get used very much in warfare or in civilian life, but even when it does get used, it's unlikely to have many of these damaging contacts that people seem to obsess over when they're talking about parrying with the edge or parrying with the flat. Thank you.